Certainly the answers to some questions are elusive. Often we've never thought about them, but on a train journey. There are simple questions which will always elicit a response. Where are you from? And where are you going? My name is Jada Knox, and I live in Adelaide, and I, right now I'm going to Sydney. Uh, it has sort of a very sad background, because I just recently lost my grandson, and um, he was such a lovely boy. He was one day 20 years old, and the next day he died of limb cancer, and we are very grieving very much for him. And I was sort of going to Sydney, trying to get over this grief, uh, because I have another son in Sydney, and that son has a twins, and uh, the twins are going to be christened. So there they are. And uh, it's kind of one of those things in a life where you have some terrible things happening, and then some happy things happening. I came to Australia in um, 49 after the Second World War because they needed workforce and we were young and strong and I came here like the other people in, to escape from Stalin. In 1989 the things changed in Europe and up till then I felt I was quite illiterate in politics. Everything was all right here in Australia. Why worry who is there on the top in Canberra or anywhere, or anywhere else? And then things changed so suddenly in Europe. And then I thought, gosh, I have to find out what goes on in the world politically. And so I enrolled in politics. I always knit with circular needles. So they, I don't drop the needles. Let me ask you about this thing. No, this is where the thing... What is the deal with Australians putting a Y on every word? They shorten words, like like footy for foot, football, right? Or I don't know, because I'm not really that Australian. Like, you're talking to like... Wait a minute, like... excuse me, what do you mean you're not really that Australian? Well, you know, where are you from? born here, but... Um... Okay, let me see, you were born here. I want to see how you get out of being Australian. Go ahead. No, I was born here, but... Oh. Heaven. I'm Australian by birth, but you're asking me all these kind of colloquial things that I can't tell you. Well, you're in Australian by birth. Where did you live? I didn't kind of grow up that way. Where did you live? I grew up in Melbourne, but I didn't... Oh, so that's in Australia, though. No, what you... I was working with another Chinese actor and she tended to defer a lot to me for her culture and her Asian-ness and I wasn't very I wasn't very aware at all of how Chinese I was I didn't think I, I don't consider myself that Chinese probably because I was born in, the, in a country area probably because I went to what is essentially a straight Catholic school and I wasn't around Chinese things but like little things like sounds like the sound of food frying always you know the, the language was very, very different. Um, Chinese people are very loud. They talk loudly and they're quite loud. They eat always. They're always eating and talking about things. They're not very physical. It's like a whole lot of this stuff sort of came up for me in the process of working on this play and I realised how Chinese I was. Australia's longest river, the Murray, marks the border between Victoria and New South Wales. Three hours and 190 miles from Melbourne, the XPT stops at the border town of Albury. For over a hundred years, the madness of the Australian railway system was never more evident than here in Albury. The madness began in 1868, the job of building railroads on the largest area of virgin land on the planet was given to two Irishmen and a Scot who didn't get along. Each man lobbied and won to have his preferred width of line accepted by his home state. 
Soon there was a tangle of gauges crisscrossing the nation. Consequently, when you reached the state border, it went something like this. Over the old train! What the hell? Take the children. Grab the luggage. Find the ticket. Get a porter. We're changing train. We're changing gauge. This is the border. This is the barrier between the states. Men, women, children, babies, papers, parcels, pears, potatoes, plows, tractors, cultivators, turkeys, ducks, onions, apples, fowls, chicken, sheep, and cattle, bulls, cows, iron, steel, timber, coal, and sex. Changing carriages, changing trucks, wasting manpower, wasting time. Today there's no fuss, no sense of expectation as the XPT slides into the station at 11.36 a.m. for a two-minute stopover. Ribbons of steel now unite the states which once fought each other for supremacy. Travelling between Sydney and Perth was an even more complicated exercise. At, at one, one point it, it required about four or five changes of, of, of trains. Now you just do it in, in, in one go because there is a uh, standardised gauge system throughout the country. So we've come a long way. I've never really been on this station. I'm born here, so I like this. Really? You're, this is where you're from? I'm born here. As we leave Albury now, in a fairly uneventful way, it's, it's nice to be able to stop for a moment and remember what people went through as we sit here in relative, relative comfort. My grandfather was a real train freak. Train freak, really? He way? loved the trains. He used to, um, he had a train. He used to run this railway station all the way through his house. In the mornings, the things you used to hear, like you used to hear all the bells and the whistles and the steam and the whole thing, and he was really interested in steam engines, mainly. And to wake us up, we used to stay in the sunroom. He'd turn the trains on and the train would come around, and, you, and he'd toot. Just in our room, just as the train came past. It was really fantastic. There's another one. Well, another thousand, anyway. Sheep. We are in sheep country. Riding at 130 kilometers an hour, we blur past acres of sheep. Sheep spend their entire lives eating. At least, it seems that way from here. something you didn't know. I mean, unless you have a thing about sheep history, there's no way that you would know these sheep were imported here by a woman. Yep, the manly art of sheep ranching was perfected by Janet Templeton, who apparently went looking for the perfect sheep for Australia. She found them in Ireland, slept a couple hundred back on the boat, and mustn't that have been a lovely trip, and started Merino sheep herding in 1838. Today, well, today, those same sheep are dead. Of course, they would be. After all, I mean, they'd be, what, 160 years old, which is like 710 in sheep years, but I digress. Today, their descendants are doing what they do best, munching. 250 miles from Melbourne and a few miles south of the town of Wagga Wagga, the XPT passes the Kapuka Army Barracks, Australia's basic training centre. Uh, day starts at 0600 hours. Breakfast. Lessons or revision. And down to the gym for either swimming or some sort of running or PT activity. In ten short weeks, these young Australians will become soldiers. They may follow in the traditions of their parents and grandparents by serving their country on the soils of other lands. Except for some minor incursions during the Second World War, White Australia has never defended her shores against a foreign enemy. Nevertheless, Australian soldiers have fought bravely in both World Wars, Korea and Vietnam. More recently, they have contributed to the United Nations contingents in Rwanda, Somalia, Cambodia and Bosnia. There is a visible difference in the uh, training where our corps of soldiers, for example, were willing to make uh, decisions uh, that their counterparts from other different countries wouldn't. The role of a, um, an 
officer or a soldier in the Australian Army is certainly a complex one, and uh, one where one has to have a, uh, a lot of skills. Okay, but you have your um, bayonet point up. Um, dealing with other contingents, dealing with their customs uh, and, and cultural dif differences. Okay, to protect yourself. All right, you're then going to do a thrust, then a left parry, followed by a horizontal butt stroke, then a smash, then a slash, and then adopt the on guard position. Any problems with that? No, sir. No questions? No, sir. Good. Okay. On guard! Left parry! Fast stroke! Smash! 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 On guard! Fear, control, violence, and aggression. The emotions of war flow uneasily just beneath the surface in all societies. And while the history books are full of examples of wars which never should have been fought, we can only hope that modern armies continue to promote understanding of cultural differences and push the boundaries for peace rather than conflict. The XPT pulls into the curiously named town of Wagga Wagga at 12.43 p.m. It means a uh, place of many crows. Really? Yes. Yeah. She stays just long enough for a group of new recruits to tumble into their new life under the guidance of Peter Kelly. Sure. That's great. You know, travelers always know more about... That's right. Know, absolutely. I mean, I go to the Statue of Liberty, you know, like once a decade. Somebody says, yeah, this came from... The Statue of Liberty came from France? Really? They, they liked us that much? Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, well, I knew that too, but I mean, at a certain but point... But you had to come to Australia to find out what Wagga Wagga meant. Yeah, that didn't come up in school. No. They didn't have, like, you know, in the coverage of Australia, we heard about convicts and aboriginals, and, you know, they had a nice bridge. They got a great place over there in Sydney with the Opera House, but Wagga Wagga did not get covered. There you go. Nobody I know hitchhikes in America. There's not enough good faith to go around. Evil, which used to reside in the hearts of men, seems to have been given free reign to wander the byways of our souls and the side roads of our villages. It has cost us untold moments of discovery and surprise. Not so in the land down under. Here, they still raise a finger at passing motorists in the full anticipation that it will cause them to stop and be friendly. I can't help but congratulate each of the participants of this highway ballet on their unconquerable faith in each other. <laughs> 